All right, so I want to show you a couple examples of um, radical functions in the real world, the so real world applications of radical functions. So a radical function is a function in which a variable is under a radical in some way, like you know, y equals the square root of x plus 3. You know, the variable x is under that radical. And they uh, generally take this form. You know, they could be reflected or whatever, but this, this sort of thing, right? Um, if you notice, if you flip this on its side, it would look like half of a parabola. Uh, and that's because the, the, uh, radical functions are the in, um, inverse of um, square functions. Like y equals x squared and y equals square root of x are inverse functions. Anyway, all that to say, um, let's move on to the real world examples. Um, so, for example, the velocity in meters per second of a free falling object as a function of um, the height from which it is dropped uh, in meters is uh, described by this equation. V equals the square root. Um, and let me just actually just draw the square root better. Um, typing it kind of doesn't look right. Um, is square root of 9.8 times 2 times the height from which it's dropped. Um, and that's I ignoring air resistance and everything. Um, at what height should you drop a watermelon if you want it to hit the ground at 100 meters per second? So we're ignoring the fact that there will be a terminal velocity of the watermelon, you know, uh, a point at which the uh, downward force of gravity is matched by the force of the air resistance. Um, so ignoring that, what height, how high should we drop this thing from if we want, to get, want it to get going? up to 100 meters per second by the time it hits the ground. All right, you know, good problem, right? So uh, 100 is the velocity we want, 100 meters per second. It's equal to the square root of 9.8. And this is valid for um, you know, locations more or less close to the surface of the Earth. You know, it's 9.8 is the acceleration due to the gravity. Um, times 2 times the height. So we want to solve for the height here. Uh, so we need to kind of unravel this function until we get height by itself. So all this is being square rooted, so we could square both sides uh, to undo that. So 100 squared is, what is that? Um, 10,000, I believe. It should be four zeros. Yeah. 10,000 is equal to um, 9.8 times 2 times the height in meters. Um, so 9.8 times 2 is 19.6. Um, is right? 9.8 times 2, 19.6. So we'll divide both sides by. 19.6 divided by 19.6, we should get our height. Um, so 10,000 divided by 19.6 is 510, more or less. So we need to drop it from at least 510 meters above the ground in order to allow it to get up to the speed of 100 meters per second. Um, you know, maybe we really want to smash it real good. Um, I don't know. Um, so let's look at another one. Uh, on Earth, the distance you can see the horizon in miles in terms of your height above the ground in feet is modeled by the equation distance that you can see is equal to six-fifths times the square root of um, your height above the ground. In other words, all right, if you're just standing on the ground, you can see, you know, this far, if you're on top of a mountain, you can see a lot farther. And the equation is, is uh, the relationship is like this. The distance you can see is six-fifths times the square root of your height above the ground. All right, without flying in a rocket, is it possible to see a distance of 200 miles to the horizon? You know, assuming a clear sky, you know, the haze doesn't um, cut off your view, etc. So without flying in a rocket, is it possible to see a distance of 200 miles? So what we can do is uh, we could 
say, all right, let's see a distance of 200 miles is equal to 6 fifths times the square root of the height. And let's solve for height and see if that's, you know, a reasonable height. So let's, let's get h by itself. So it's being multiplied by 6 fifths. So we can multiply both sides by 5 sixths to undo that. 5, 6. Um, so let's just do that on the calculator. 200 times 5 divided by 6. 166.6 repeating. Uh, so let's just say 166.7. Let's round it. Is equal to the square root of the height. So we could square both sides to get height all by itself. Um, so we'll just square that. Um, so that is 27,777.7 repeating. Just going to round that. Um, feet. Okay. So that's, that's the height at which you'd have to be in order to see out to the horizon a distance of 200 miles. Well, can we do that without flying in a rocket? Yeah. Um, you could climb Mount Everest, for example. Mount Everest is uh, like 29,000 um, something feet uh, above sea level. So that would be plenty. You know, you'd be able to see even farther, actually, on top of Everest. So the answer to this question is yes. All right. There are some radical functions for you. Um, I will see you later.